Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed afternoon update on uh, the rainfall depression that's expected to saturate the grounds up in far north Queensland, especially along the Casserow Coast and into the Daintree Rainforest over the coming couple of days. Starting this afternoon, January 26, 2025, Australia Day. Happy Australia Day to all watching. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it and check us out on Facebook as well. Link in the description, but let's get stuck straight into things right now with the rainfall depression and the rainfall that it is now funneling ashore across the Casserow Coast and the final than reaches of Queensland. This is all we're going to be talking about in this update here, so stick around. There's a lot of information. We're going to go really into depth here. So as you can see, the rainfall now really starting to build across the Casper Coast. There's some heavy showers lingering just offshore, and they're blowing up more and more as the afternoon goes on. And I was expecting this to be uh, how things were expected to un unfold throughout the course of today. I thought after about lunchtime, the rainfall would truly set in. It's probably about two or three hours behind, and it is a little bit further north than I did initially expect. In fact, it's really all heading into the Daintree Rainforest at this time, but certainly some heavy falls now starting to be reported. 50mm uh, rainfall accumulations now outside of South Mission Beach, north of Tully, 60mm at Hamilton Island. They've had some good storms over the last couple of hours and much more rainfall to come as well. This is a full-blown rainfall depression, the low-pressure system north of Willis Island, well out into the Coral Sea, and you can see there is some very, very weak rotation starting to spin into this system, but like I said, it is very weak at this time and it's only in the lower levels, but uh, the clouds are moving in completely the opposite direction to where the actual lower-level rainfall is uh, headed, and that's because we're seeing thunderstorms fire up in a pretty high wind shear environment, which tells me that the, pre uh, that the predominant risk here is going to be showers. We're not expecting heavy bands of rainfall um, to be streaming through. Well, we are expecting heavy bands of rainfall, but we're not expecting kind of 12 to 14 hours of rainfall that, like we do sometimes see up at this time of the year in the far northern reaches of Queensland. It's more so going to be funnels and the streams of showers heading ashore up there. So let's just jump straight into the forecast right now. We've done a pretty good overview, but let's get straight into the forecast and the nitty gritty of what is expected over the coming couple of days. And I'm going to be exclusively using the access but starting things off with a convective forecast model to really get a good look at the high resolution picture of this uh, forecast this time. And you can see there's not actually an awful lot on the forecast. The rainfall is much more prominent and also much more widespread than what the forecast models are currently suggesting, which is interesting. And it does tell me that the forecast models have been underestimating this rainfall system and this rainfall depression over the last couple of days. The main access forecast model has actually been doing a really good job. And you can see here over the coming couple of hours, it really does bring in those elevated rainfall accumulations across the Casper coast and up into the uh, Daintree rainforest as well. A lot of this rainfall actually does, for the most part, miss the Cairns area uh, too, especially over the next 24 hours, and I'll get to why that is in just a few moments, but you can see that heavy uh, rainfall now really piping up across the far northern reaches of Queensland. This is at 2 p.m. Uh, or 4 p.m. Uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time. You can see those rainfall accumulations really start to pick up around Innisfail, and just as the day draws on further and further, these rainfall accumulations will continue to increase, most likely maxing out at around 7 or 8 o'clock local time, probably a little bit later than that, to be honest, before a temporary easing of the rainfall comes through later on tonight, and then it pipes up again early tomorrow morning. The broad low pressure system is going to be centered uh, well offshore from the Queensland coastline, but it's also going to move itself closer and closer to the coastline, which means on the southern side of this system where a lot of this evaporation, a lot of this rainfall is being funneled ashore, uh, that's going to really peak out kind of tonight and into early tomorrow morning. So that's why we're expecting the rainfall to continue increasing throughout the course of uh, today and into tonight, because the low pressure system right now located north of Willis Island, but it's going to be heading steadily uh, closer and closer at only a rate of a couple of knots per hour uh, towards the Queensland coastline. But it is still going to be moving in that general direction now, such the rainfall is going to be dragged closer and closer to the Queensland coastline. You can see tomorrow morning we're expecting another burst and another peak in the rainfall around the Cassowary coast, so north of Ingham right up through into the Daintree rainforest we're expecting another really heavy burst of rainfall to take hold of it along the Cassowary coast at around 5 or 6 a.m. This rainfall will persist until uh, the late morning hours uh, along the Cassowary coast and then into the late afternoon hours along the Daintree rainforest coastline here before the rainfall then eases off late tomorrow night, but this is going to result in hundreds of millimetres of rainfall pretty uh, much guaranteed at this time for especially the Cassero Coast and also up into the Daintree Rainforest. And it's, like I said at the start of the video, not this steady rainfall that uh, you get in the band that registers as green or light yellows on the uh, Bureau of Meteorology radar colour scheme. You can see here that these showers actually do mean business and because it is showers going to be coming through, there's not so much of a riverine flooding risk associated with this weather event, but more so a flash flooding risk. I mean, take a look at some of these showers here, very slow moving stuff with peak rainfall rates of about 60 or 70 millimetres an hour and once they get 
get themselves over a weather station, you're just going to be seeing triple figure rainfall accumulations left, right, and center. And to be honest, I have actually been taken aback by how much rainfall has already fallen. I didn't expect the rainfall to start up until about 3 or 4 p.m. Uh, along the coastline. It already has, and we're seeing these uh, high double figure rainfall accumulations already starting to approach triple figure by the time this video is out along the Casper Coast. So this certainly is really starting to build this rainfall here. And as we get with heavy showers, we do certainly have that flash flooding risk. So along the Casper Coast, make sure you are ready for flash flooding up there. If you live in a flood prone area or you live close to a river that's already flowing quite high uh, and close to the moderate or the um, minor river in flooding marks, then I'd certainly start thinking that flooding is going to be imminent in your area. I wouldn't necessarily be uh, thinking about evacuating at this time. That would only happen if an unforeseen amount of rainfall came. We'll be talking about four or 500 millimeters tonight. Uh, and again, I'd release another update if that was actually going to happen, but I highly doubt it this time. But certainly keep it in the back of your head. If you do live in a flood prone area or you've got livestock or property in a flood prone area, then it certainly is a good idea to now, while it is still a little bit calmer to get it out of that or get it into a uh, safer environment. Uh, if you've got like a shed on the creek, uh, on, on a creek that's got like uh, ATVs or motorbikes or something like that uh, inside, probably a good idea to move them into the uh, household garage or something just in case, because when we're talking about heavy showers and especially considering how much evaporation is currently occurring along the Casper Coast, especially around Innisfail and Cardwell, I mean, these showers are blowing up out of basically nothing. And of course, they're exceeding the rainfall estimates that the forecast is suggesting. Um, we're going to be seeing some pretty significant rainfall accumulations materialize regardless of what actually happens to some of these locations here. You can see later on through tomorrow, the rainfall really persistent along the Daintree uh, rainforest coastline. And while it dies off around the Casper Coast, the Daintree continues to get saturated right out until early Tuesday morning. The rainfall will then peak again Tuesday morning on the 28th of January. You can see here outside of Innisfail and Tully, we're looking at one hourly rainfall accumulations up to about 80 millimeters an hour. And this is on the forecast and sustained for multiple hours at a time. So some really heavy falls expected throughout Tuesday morning and into early Tuesday afternoon. Like I said, once again, moving up into the Daintree uh, rainforest area Tuesday afternoon through Tuesday evening. So some very heavy falls expected through uh, out the course of Tuesday. And I do actually believe Tuesday is going to end up being the wettest day with rainfall accumulations widespread well in excess of triple figures across much of the North Queensland area. And I do actually expect the majority of weather stations up here to receive triple figure rainfall accumulations, especially on the coastline around the Casper Coast and into the Daintree rainforest, with the only exceptions being some of the communities further inland and around the Cairns area, Corunda and Cairns. I would say that 24 hourly, uh, 100 millimeter plus rainfall accumulations right now for both of those locations looking pretty unlikely, but along the Casper Coast and the mountains adjacent inland uh, with 150 millimeters coming through over the next 24 hours and then two to 300 millimeters coming out on Tuesday. By the 9 a.m. on Wednesday, we could be seeing five or 600 millimeters in the gauges from now uh, across this part of Queensland. Now, that isn't a necessarily a lot of rainfall in comparison to the annual rainfall accumulations across the North Queensland area, but considering it's only going to be happening across the next 48 to 72 hours, that's some ridiculous stuff that's coming through. 600 millimeters in 72 hours. Of course, that is the absolute maximum in terms of rainfall that we are expecting up here, but it is entirely plausible with the sea temperatures and their uh, nature of this weather event here, and especially considering the rainfall takes, in, especially across the Daintree rainforest, until late Wednesday afternoon to pretty much completely ease off, and the showers still persisting through Wednesday evening and into Thursday morning, these accumulations are going to be huge, and it's reciprocated between the uh, other forecast models as well, so we're very certain that this is going to materialise how the forecast models are suggesting, and I do believe that, but give or take a few kind of inconsistencies here and there, especially considering the main forecast models aren't actually suggesting much rainfall further inland, I do reckon for the most part the peak rainfall observation here are going to match pretty much exactly what the forecast is suggesting. You can see here four day rainfall accumulations up to six or 700 millimeters adjacent to the Cassidy Coast. Plausible stuff as well. Uh, I've released multiple Facebook posts on this saying that we are now looking at some really serious rainfall coming through uh, up here. And if you do have any questions or comments or concerns, especially, then please do consider flicking me an email or leave it in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to help you out uh, down there and in the emails as well. Uh, this is a very serious threat to lives and property. The amount of rainfall that is coming through, it, it doesn't matter if you're living in one of the wettest places in Australia. This is 600 millimetres over a 72 hour period. Uh, that will cause flooding anywhere and some significant riverine flooding is expected at least up towards the minor or the moderate levels across especially the Daintree rainforest. I reckon they're going to be harder impacted than the Casper Coast because they are expecting just basically another 24 hour period of rainfall on top of what the Casper Coast is expecting. But again, peak rainfall accumulations are going to be wild regardless. And north to south, you can see Cooktown expecting about 200 millimetres. I think that's a plausible number there. Woodshill, Woodshill, Port Douglas and Mossman will all pick 
up at least 300 millimeters and i reckon mossman will get closer to about 500 millimeters through there and some of the communities around the daintree rainforest are, are like wonga beach up to cape tribulation and even daintree village which is nestled in a very tight valley up there they can receive some whopping rainfall accumulations i, I guess that goes without saying we could be seeing six to seven hundred millimeters there and spot accumulations of a thousand millimeters are also completely possible as well cans i'd say we'll get about 150 millimeters it's just going to be residual showers coming through over the next four days up around the cans area so i wouldn't get your hopes up for any significant type of rainfall there they're reasonably protected and considering the rainfall is going to be coming in from the southeast towards the east they are reasonably protected from that sort of rainfall and as such the rainfall accumulations there aren't going to be anything super significant or anything really uh crazy around the cans or even out towards the Karunda area still though triple figure rainfall accumulations over the next three or four days are expected and i wouldn't be surprised if cans ended up with about 200 millimeters but i don't really see them getting any more than that blend and kerr gordon vale fishery falls down to innisfail johnston and tully all those areas spot rainfall accumulations speckled here and there of about a thousand millimeters are expected widespread accumulations above 500 millimeters expected and a couple of accumulations pushing six or seven hundred millimeters also expected in those areas if i had to throw out a number for innisfail babinda and tully at least 600 millimeters and probably about 750 for, for babinda south mission beach as well should get about 800 millimeters of rainfall from this weather event especially considering they've already picked up about 60 millimeters which is far more than what they should have at this point here uh down to cardwell and yama probably about uh 250 to 350 millimeters a piece there cardwell will likely be a little bit wetter than uh ingham and uh, just widespread high rainfall accumulations there but anywhere south of ingham down towards Ma uh Mutari, uh and, and uh townsville rainfall accumulations shouldn't be in the triple figures in fact towns all the rain dome will be in full swing there protected as usual from southeasterly showers and it doesn't look like townsville is going to be picking up anything significant in the way of rainfall spot accumulations up to 100 millimeters expected along this uh north central queensland coastline right down towards proserpine and hamilton island especially considering the rainfall that they have already picked up there i wouldn't be surprised if accumulations there amounted to 100 or 150 millimeters here and there but for the most part 25 to 50 millimeters looks to be the expected amount in those areas over the next four days at least and then inland along the cassowary coast mariba atherton and raven so should pick up 100 millimeters but anything over that certainly going to be bonus especially for mariba i wouldn't be expecting anything higher than about 100 uh and 50 millimeters uh in these areas here into the more central areas of queensland that basically does it for the rainfall accumulations and the numbers so let's now take a look at what's driving this and then we'll take a look at the longer range forecast as well and those sea temperatures are of course without a doubt uh the factor that's really driving this rainfall up 31 pushing 32 degrees celsius sea temperatures along the uh Cassowary coast especially and then uh 30 pushing 31 along the daintree rainforest coastline now uh, that's about two degrees Celsius above average, and as such, just with the way sea temperatures work, it's um uh, an, an exponential scale basically we're probably talking about 10 to 15 times the amount of available energy for these showers to uh, draw out of the ocean and about 10 times the amount of moisture that they can draw out of the ocean uh, and it turn into showers and rainfall that's going to be wrung out by the mountains adjacent to the Queensland coastline along the Cassowary coast and into the Daintree rainforest and what that means is there's going to be heaps of evaporation and as such these showers are going to be picking up moisture like it's no tomorrow along these areas here and some huge rainfall accumulations are expected as a result this is going to be far wetter than a typical rainfall event might I add where they might see a three or four hundred millimeters in a week and still call it a reasonably wet week because 400 millimeters regardless of where you are around Australia that is wet stuff even for far north Queensland uh, but we're probably going to be talking about four figure rainfall accumulations across some of these locations here depending on uh, what showers come through for what locations but uh, I mean some of these showers here are packing like we said accumulations up to about 70 or 80 millimeters an hour so some really heavy stuff is moving through along the Casper coast at this time and even further inland as well you can see some showers out here already put pushing about 60 or 70 millimeters an hour. So some heavy showers here and very slow moving as well, picking up a lot of moisture right on the coastline as well. You can see this is a really thick shower in comparison to what they normally get. And it is a much more turbulent kind of situation here along the uh, North Queensland coastline. So it's gonna be wetter than normal. It's gonna be more severe than normal. There's gonna be more rainfall than normal. And as such, there's gonna be more flooding than normal. Any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below and feel free to flick me an email as well. I just wanna briefly touch on the longer range forecast as well, because these uh, tropical low will eventually cause North Queensland some kind of problems in the forecast. Whether it's winds, whether it's rainfall, whether it's a direct impact as a significant tropical cyclone, we're still not 100% sure, but we do have a solid chance of about 25% now of a tropical low developing in the Gulf of Carpentier and about 30% in the Coral Sea sometime next weekend on the 1st and 2nd of February. Now, I do expect a tropical cyclone to develop in the Coral Sea at some point in the first week of February. At this time, expecting a tropical low to develop about three or 400 kilometers offshore towards the north or the 
east northeast of Cairns in this general area here, and you can see reciprocated between the other forecast models. It's a very easy forecast to pick here. But depending on how close it forms to the Queensland coastline, if it forms pretty much right on the coastline, we're going to see some intensification, and then probably a direct hit somewhere along the Queensland coastline. Not looking awfully likely at this time, but if it is further offshore, which is looking slightly more likely at this time, then we're most likely going to be seeing these systems completely miss Queensland and really not provide them any more than a couple of showers and maybe some gusty winds and high tides here and there. The forecast is very uncertain. I'm not going to be calling any shots at this time on these tropical cyclones. I'm not going to be saying prepare. I'm not going to be saying what's expected because there's really nothing that can be expected or any conclusions that can be drawn from this forecast. The scope of uncertainty is still huge and it ranges from these systems not forming at all to powerful tropical cyclones impacting the Queensland coastline. It's a whole range of possibilities at this time and unfortunately I did say that we'd have know pretty much exactly what was expected by this weekend but that is not looking like the case right now unfortunately so we're going to have to give it another couple of days to know exactly what these systems are expected to be doing. Don't panic if you're on the North Queensland coastline or don't panic at least if you're uh, looking out for a tropical cycling impact the forecast is still very uncertain and we're also looking a week out into the future now as well so uh, quite long range and you've got plenty of time to prepare if something does come onto the forecast but we're watching this uh, closely over the coming couple of days and you bet I'll be the first to let you know if a tropical cycling is imminent for the North Queensland coastline and of course it goes without saying don't listen to any of that Facebook fake news stuff of a massive tropical cycling impact on Queensland. There's no real concrete solid evidence to suggest that right now. A couple of forecast models suggesting it but it's not looking overly likely at this time so don't buy too hard into those uh, Facebook fake news situations right now. It's not uh, healthy at all but anyway so that is all that I have time for a bit of a shorter update. Uh, I thought it was necessary considering that we do need to go into great detail here across North Queensland so I do hope you've enjoyed it and I'll be really releasing more updates on this uh, system as well in this style uh, over the coming couple of days. So again, make sure you are subscribed. The support has been much appreciated lately. We're getting closer and closer to 24,000 subscribers as well. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and join the Facebook page as well. Feedback always welcome in the comment section down below as well. And a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on the screen right now, but that is all for me this afternoon. Happy Australia Day to all watching and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.